in the lush green folds of Muranga County, Kenya, where the rivers dance but poor cables refuse to follow. One young man looked around and thought, if nobody is bringing electricity, maybe I should. His name? John Magiro. A student of few textbooks, fewer privileges, but endless imagination. When the government flipped switches that never reached his village, Magiro flipped his mindset and lit up a community. This is a tale of electricity made from scrap, sweat, and stubbornness. A DIY hydroelectric dam that runs not just on water, but on willpower. At the age of 10, John Magiro's life sparked, literally, thanks to his brother's bicycle. Not just because of the rides, but because of a tiny glowing bulb attached to the bicycle. Each time the bicycle wheel turned, light flickered. Most kids would have been impressed, but John, he was inspired. Magiro says the self-improvised power plant supplies sustainable and stable power. He stared at the dynamo-powered headlamp and thought, if this little wheel can light up one bulb, what if I could make it bigger? But dreaming big in Moranga came with smaller resources. The region, although rich in rivers and natural resources, was bankrupt in infrastructure. No power lines, no transformers, just long nights, dark huts, and a sky full of stars mocking the absence of electricity. Yet Magiro wasn't deterred. He started where he could, his mother's house. With nothing but scavenged bicycle dynamo, off-cut scrap metal, some rusty tools, and no fancy training in physics, which he barely passed in school, he built his first micro hydroelectric generator and it worked. It poured a small bulb. Just one bulb. But in that moment, it poured a movement. The turbines in the powerhouse, he says, convert the kinetic energy of falling water from the waterfalls into mechanical energy, which is in turn converted into electrical energy by the generator. Now let's be clear. Magiro did not go to YouTube or Google to search how to build a hydro plant then order some high-end parts from Alibaba. Oh no. What he did was to go to River Gondo, study its slopes, currents, and rocks like a possessed man, and then apply textbook knowledge which he didn't technically have. The first phase was building pressure. He realized that the trick wasn't just water, it was fast water. Speed equals power. So he diverted a portion of the river, built a wooden reservoir using tree trunks, and created a makeshift dam. Then he elevated the pipe inlet so that gravity could add its muscle to the game. Water dropped down through huge black pipes, increasing velocity and shooting towards a turbine like a caffeinated waterfall. Phase 2 was spinning something. The high pressure water heat turbines made from DIY scrap metal. This turned the elegance of a bicycle wheel at a Tour de France speed. This spinning mechanical energy poured a motorcycle sized dynamo, which Magiro rigged into an electric generator. Phase 3 was lighting up the night, and voila, electricity was born. From the makeshift generator, Poor ran through locally installed cables and basic voltage regulators to nearby homes. The first to receive the light? His family. The second? His neighbors. The third? A dream he didn't even realize he had until it was too late to stop it. Magiro had built a functioning micro hydro power station. Today, Magiro doesn't just operate one micro hydroelectric power station anymore. He commands a tree of them, with the crown jewelry being Kahimu Power Station. A system so efficient and clean, it could shame half the national infrastructure plants. The process begins with the water being redirected from the main river into a holding reservoir where it is patiently gathered like it's waiting for a performance. From there, the water is released through large pipes laid on a steep incline 
allowing gravity to crank up the pressure, like nature's own hydroelectric pump. This pressurized flow slumps into turbines, spinning them with enough force to generate mechanical energy. No diesel, no drama. The spinning turbines are directly connected to a generator shaft, which converts that raw rotation into usable electricity. After the show, the water exits peacefully through a draft tube and rejoins the river, ensuring the local ecosystem doesn't skip a beat. It's simple, it's silent and it's spectacularly effective. All of it is crafted from repurposed parts, tree trunks, scrap metal, discarded pipes. No smoke, no fossil fuels, just rivers, resourcefulness, and raw ingenuity lighting up a village. Magiro's power isn't just electricity, it's transformation. In Indumbi village, the arrival of electricity meant new businesses, barber shops opened, welding gigs exploded, milk coolers replaced guesswork, shops extended hours. The local Tuinobi shopping center became a hive of nighttime activity. This specific occasion, Magero is in Kangema inspecting one of his projects, a new hotel that he has powered from the nearby river Kayawe Falls. Streetlights now bathe the dirt roads in soft glow drastically reducing crime and perhaps most importantly installing a sense of modern pride and guess what it's all free zero electric bills just a small maintenance fee per month to keep the turbines running and the wires humming suddenly the poorest families in the area could do what the richest still complain about flip a switch and see light this isn't just rural electrification, this is rural liberation. Of course, when your home hydro system becomes famous, demand follows. And with the demand comes pressure. The initial setup wasn't meant for 300 homes, 2 schools, 5 businesses, and one guy who keeps charging everyone's phone for 10 shillings. Old John Magiro switches on his power and there's light in the streets. Magiro had to scale fast. He now works with partners including Belgian investors to build more plants, provide technical support, and train locals in maintaining and replacing the model. And fast forward to today, these investors have helped Magiro's business expand dramatically because in Kenya, before Magiro, there was no Bitcoin mining rigs. But as of today, the first and only big mining rig in the country is in Magiro's power plant because you know obviously bitcoin mining rigs consume a lot of electric power and through these investors they saw an opportunity with Magiro so you can imagine it Magiro started with nothing but right now he runs a very large scale bitcoin mining rig so you can imagine Magiro is stacking up the cash so not only does he feed his villagers and community with these investors Magiro was able to venture to new things. And Magiro today is a very rich man. This isn't some foreign funded solar gimmick or fly in NGO stand. This is local, sustainable, and revolutionary. His power stations may not hit megawatt charts, but their impact is measured in laughter, business, education, and security. So the next time your lights flicker and you cast your electric bill, Think of my hero, standing barefoot by a tavern in Moranga, watching the water spin, smiling, and proving to the world that Africa never runs out of power. It just needs someone brave enough to tap in.